Hi, I'm Greg. Today I'm going to show you how to build an acoustic panel. In this application I'm building a movie theater room and these panels work well for reverberation and controlling a lot of bouncing sound waves in them. So come on in, let's take a look. So what I have in process here, these are some panels that are in process. These will just go, they'll get a fabric wrapped around them and then they'll get hung up on the wall. And uh, in my movie theater here, I was trying to figure out where to put the panels and I ended up using the painter's tape you can see on the wall here for different spots. What, you're, what you really want to do is get the reflection point to your speaker. So pretend the speaker was sitting in here and then what you do is you get it positioned the orientation you want it so the center speaker you point straight on. Sit in the spot where you will be watching the movie screen and have somebody take a mirror on the wall just a little mirror about this big and have them slide it along the wall. And when you're sitting in that chair and you can see the speaker, that's a reflection point. So the ray, the sound wave will come over and hit this. If you control those, you get really nice sound in the room. So let's start with the frame. I'm just gonna grab uh, some scrap wood here to show you how I built the frame. There's a couple tricks here. Here's an empty frame right now that I just built uh, earlier today. The key thing you'll want to do is find a flat place, flat surface to work on. And then I just bought some pine boards. These are one by threes, select, they're very nice. And then uh, all I do is I simply, uh, why don't you zoom on, come on in here. When I, I want to show them this stuff. When you build these, you can use clamps and stuff, but I actually recommend not using clamps. I know a lot of wood builders do but I'm just gonna show you a real simple way here so that the frame doesn't wobble or doesn't get warped. A lot of times you try to build frames and they get warped. So the trick is just get a flat surface, frame up your, the dimensions that you want for your board. And all you do is put some glue on. So take some glue and then get your 90 degree angles. Put the 90 degree angles on it so that you don't square and let the glue just dry it, or let the glue just dry. You don't need clamps or anything. What that does is it just lets it sit very flat. Then, after the glue is dried, uh, it takes uh, about an hour, even less. Then come by and pre-drill the holes and then run screws in it. And then uh, once you have that frame made, I put a little molding on top of it. And what this does is so when you wrap the decorative fabric over, it gives it a little bit more height here because the insulation that I'm using is, uh, they claim it's three and a half inches thick, but really when you buy a one by three, it's not a true three inches. So by putting this molding on the top, it gives you a little bit more height on there. Now, one little trick you might want. Uh, one problem that people have when they build the panels is how do you, hold the, the sound absorbing material so it doesn't fall out. One thing you can do is when you buy this quarter round, the wood comes three quarter inch thick. You can get this in 11 sixteenths. And then when you, when you attach it on there, the outer surface may flush, but there's a lip on the inside. I don't know if you can see that here, but when you mount this like here, it's flush on the outside. There's a little lip right there. That lip, if you, have, if you want to make really large panels and the stuffing is falling out, you can put a board across it using that lip will help hold it in. These panels, the biggest ones are almost six feet tall. I don't need that lip, but I just build them that way anyway. You're going to have to find some sound absorbing material. I'm using this blue jean material. It's old blue jeans ground up. Uh, I didn't want to use the fiberglass insulation I didn't because my family will be in here. I'll be in here. And I just didn't want the fiberglass particles getting into the air system and everything. I don't know if it matters, but the blue jean material, although it's expensive, one bag is about $60. And the other insulation stuff, which works just as good or better, is only about seven or eight dollars, but I just didn't want the uh, the fiberglass particles. So I use this. So let's get started here. Uh, after you've got your frame glued up and you ran some screws through there, the other, then you want to just sand the edges real quick and I'll show you a real little secret to cheating here after you take the uh, trim gun and you tack this into here you just take some drywall mud joint compound 
and just put that wherever there is, you don't have an even surface, put that on there and then you can sand it really smooth and it comes out really nice. So here's our frame. So what we're going to start with is, uh, we'll start with our insulation here. I already cut these to length. So you just want to throw them into, throw them in here, fit them in there nice. And then one thing, another thing that I do, probably don't really have to do this, but I don't know, I'm always doing stuff I don't need to do. So I'll take a little bit of caulk and just seal around the perimeter of this. So I'll just put some on the, once you get this angle so they can kind of see this. So I just kind of run a little bit on there. I don't even know if this stuff's really necessary, to tell you the truth, but this is... Good enough, just helps hold it in there a little bit. Yeah, and right here you can see the manufacturer claims this stuff's three and a half inches thick and it's really not. Um, probably more like two and a half. So this, uh, this blue jean material, certain pieces in the pack come perforated. So you can, if you need to tear it down, you just kind of tear this off. And that's kind of how I determine the width of my panels as well. So I made it 28 and a half inches, these panels because uh, fits this insulation really nice by just tearing off one piece of this. So if you're a purist going for the best technical design, you probably have these a different size, but I try to match between making the room look right. Some people call it the, the wife acceptance factor. So, I don't know, it's all a compromise. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Piece of in here just like we did last time. Alright. Now this frame I have, this is the top of the frame, which is gonna be the surface you'll see once it's wrapped. So I just start with that. Get that tucked in nice. The other thing that I do is, if you got some seams like this, help them stay together. Just lay a little bit of, I just lay a few beads of caulk in here. So it just kind of seals together the, just to help support the material so over the years it doesn't fall down. You just cake this in there. And this is just a construction adhesive, like a PL200, anything cheap. It's like a, Less than two bucks a tube, so it's a super cheap, uh, super cheap adhesive, construction adhesive. And I also like to run them in a little bit more. Tuck them in there nice. The rooms just sound so nice when they have the right uh, treatment on the walls. There's all kinds of scientific research on how much you should treat it. Some people say no more than a third, two thirds, I don't know, you get all kinds of arguments over what works, but just do it and listen and you'll know when it's right. So that's pretty good right there. Um, now for one other little trick that I do here. And this is worth its weight in gold, it's just a little stapler. And I'll go around and I'll just kind of tack it in. Just kind of, this denim stuff bunches up real nice. You can, Again, this just helps hold it in. Gotta check my stick supply here. Throw in some staples real quick. And now the uh, 
The next part we got here, I take some twine. And basically, all I do is zigzag around on there. And that just kind of supports it. And then I end up doing this on both sides. So, starting off, just uh, shoot that in there. And then the first one, you know, it depends if, the, if this is going to be the top of the panel. I just kind of put a row across. And then I just zigzag all the way down. And this will just help hold the uh, material in place. And then um, the smaller these panels are, the little bit easier they are. This is kind of a bigger one. So another thing that I do sometimes, because it's just kind of how I am, after I do that I just kind of put a nice little bead of caulk or adhesive and let that uh, lay in there. And remember, even though this is the front, once this is all finished we're going to wrap this in a real decorative fabric that matches the decor of the room. So we're just going to keep going like this. I'm sure there's other ways of doing this and I don't know, especially people that are avid woodworkers and stuff, you probably got a lot better ways of doing this. But... I worry in the middle about the about it uh, sagging, I'll call it. I'm not sure what. So I get that into there. But again, this is where if I was really worried about this, we have this nice lip on here. So I could put like a little lath piece, about one or two inches from here across here, staple that in, maybe put one there, here, and here, and that would really help hold that nice. But um, definitely on the larger panels, that would be more of a Something you'd want to really consider. All right. Now for the interest of this video, I'm just going to finish this up. So at the end, I, I run one all the way diagonal across the panel here. And then I'm going to come back over this one. And rather than go straight across, I'll just hit a new piece to... Alright, I'm going to run this one all the way down. And there's no rhyme or reason to this, you just kind of do as you think. Get enough staples in there to hold it. Now I'll come over to this corner. And then just because, I'm just going to go right back up here where there isn't anything. Missed that one. And then I'll also use the same, uh, you really want to buy one of these air staples. They're so nice, especially if you're doing the rest of the fabric. Then I'll cut the, uh, once you get it all done, cut it. And then I'll just let that dry half hour or so. This thing works really good for cutting is denim insulation too. The typical razor blade knives, it's really hard to cut this stuff. So it's really cutting sheet metal, but cuts that quite well. So there, I'll flip that over. I'm just gonna show you one that I did already over here. So here's a one that um, has the twine on both sides and on the back side here. And then uh, the next step will be to go to Joanne Fabrics or something of that nature, find a nice material and 
wrap it around there. And you're gonna wanna think about your panels on, cause some of the fabrics, a lot of people use Guilford or Main for acoustical applications such as home movie theaters, but the, uh, I think the material comes like 60 inches wide, 64 inches wide. So if you really wanna get the most bang for your buck in the material, you wanna keep something probably two feet or narrower, but just didn't work out right for the room. So uh, I'll be wasting some material that's about 60 inches wide and run it the full length. So get those wrapped, we'll hang them on the wall. I'll probably have to put some kind of little cushions or bumpers as they're hanging on the wall because we're gonna have a lot of base in here. I mean, this whole house is gonna be shaking. We're gonna have probably 4,000 watts just for base and a lot of 18 inch subwoofers. So they'll, they can end up rattling on the wall. So we'll want to uh, somehow contain that. So thank you for watching this video. And uh, I highly suggest you make some kind of absorb of panel for the uh, acoustic mitigation, keeping those uh, sound waves bunted around because it sounds really good. It'll make your speakers sound way better. Thank you.